We'd usually keep our distance for longer before reporting on the comings and goings of a viral video craze, but we feel like enough time has elapsed to consider what happened with the Harlem Shake. It was a viral video craze featuring a song named after a dance that originated a long time ago. Predictable. The Harlem Shake is known as a dance video that can only be recreated in post-production, set to a heavy bass instrumental track produced by Bauer in 2012. On January 30th of this year, a video vlogger named Filthy Frank, probably not his real name, uploaded a video set to the song. In the video, he and some friends dance wildly in bodysuits. As you do. On February 2nd, several parodies of Filthy Frank's video were uploaded to YouTube. One of them by YouTuber, that guy, which went bazonkers, racking up millions of views. More versions followed. More, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more. During the second week of February, more than 4,000 Harlem Shake videos were uploaded per day. By the 13th of February, over 12,000 Harlem Shake videos had been posted. And by Valentine's Day, that's the next day, the number of videos increased to over 40,000, clocking in over 175 million views. That's some swift activity. Videos have been made by college kids in dorms, large gatherings on campuses, high school kids, many offices like Facebook and Vimeo, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, indie pop duo Matt and Kim, Ryan Seacrest, Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, Chelsea Lately, the Dallas Mavericks, in the streets, underwater, on playgrounds, on ski trams. People did this. But why? One, it follows a simple and fun formula, but one that lends itself to easy and creative reimagining, suitable for any group. Two, it's short, clocking in at just 30 seconds. Three, it required hubs. Without a few early adopters acting as key initiators, this never would have happened. Because of the obvious popularity of the videos, sales of the track increased a lot. It even hit number three on the iTunes charts. In addition to sales of the music, Bauer and his label began making money through the YouTube's content ID system, obtaining the ad revenue for any and all of the 40,000 plus videos they could find. Just as things were looking good for Bauer, including a top 100 billboard hit, we started to read about him in the news as Harry Bauer Rodriguez, the center of a significant infringement suit. Music artists Hector Delgado and Philadelphia rapper Jason Musson are actually the owners of the sample, which Harry did not seek permission for when he used the words in his work. In a Daily Beast interview, the artist claimed, quote, the dude at the beginning I got off the internet, I don't even know where, end quote. Well, now he knows. It's from the 2001 song by Plastic Little called Miller Time, featuring Delgado and Musson shouting, do the Harlem Shake. Both sides are said to be reaching an agreement amicably and hope to work things out soon.